and the even, sun came out once we were like ah funny yellow light in the sky gone yeah yeah even, so and like, even running like the wind was just it would cut mm-hmm. yeah, i was perfectly happy like core temperature was fine i was yeah, running along yeah. but then like you'd, eventually you'd turn around by the river or something and you mm-hmm. just get this or blast just, of ooh. cold wind and, ugh. yes right Speaking of racing. Speaking of racing. Let's talk about <laughs> let's racing. Let's talk about yeah. preparing for yes, a race. Yes. Yeah. So. So the, the real question is, I guess, when you're narrowing down those single races, uh, you know, people are, have hopefully got a lot of things planned out. They may have a pop-up race they're going to add at this point, but they're probably working towards something in, in particular. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess we can preface this a little bit. Some of these th- things that we'll cover today are are things that you will want to do for every single race just good general preparation and some of it is stuff that you are really going to want to do for your a race yeah um certainly if you're like derek and race you know 26 times a year or something like that you probably (laughs) do not go to the nth degree (laughs) you probably wing it sometimes i'm guessing yeah oh yeah (laughs) you get a lot of practice at that point at that point yeah you're like okay yeah i think i got everything good enough let's go (laughs) so we'll start you know starting off with the the very basic logistical things that seem obvious but what kind of things should an athlete look for before they put down the money and register for the race and and click okay obviously check the date <clears throat> yeah always check the date the day of the week the location the start time you know the distances the entry fees the course i mean those are the obvious things you know i think everybody looks at that when they're looking for a race but then you know take into account there's some hidden costs there if you're going to travel um if you're going to stay there uh, how much is it going to cost you especially if you're doing something like an iron man where the whole city goes to a four-day minimum night stay so mm. kind of be aware of that if you're going to have to ship your bike, you know, how much is that going to cost? Are you on some crazy airline that, you know, you only have an option where it's going to be 150 bucks each way to do that. But then there's also kind of surprises. And I think you can kind of look a little deeper into what's going on at the race. Split transitions, weird aid station rules, like some places don't offer aid stations. Yeah. You know, know that ahead of time. I mean, know if the weather, the conditions there are a little odd. Race format. I mean, I think people have even been surprised. Like, if you go do um, Alcatraz, it's like, what? I got to run after I get out of the water? Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, just the, into the transition. The long transition <laughs> run from the swim is a rude awakening for some people. And that happens at a lot more races than I think anybody it really does. expects. Yeah. yeah. So it's some of those things you can find out ahead of time. But I just say, research as much as you can before you pay the money. Because once you pay the money and register... You know, I'm kind of thinking like a race director. I'm like, hey, man, the information's out there. Right, yeah, you, you can, know, you like, your chance. Yeah. I have never made the mistake of registering for something I, I did not intend to or, or that would have a scheduling conflict. But I have come, ver- I've had it kind of in that shopping cart type scenario where it's yeah. like, confer- whoa, wait a That's second. That's on Saturday. That's a, what? You what? Know, I like, thought it was on Sunday. Noticing yeah. that. The other, other thing I just popped into my head about, you know, you talked about the Iron Man, you know, reserving, you know, four night minimums or whatever. A lot of times if you're going to do a racecation, if you will, people will do that over a holiday weekend because you mm-hmm. have the extra built in holiday. I've got uh, a half coming up in May. Similar situation in the middle of nowhere at a campground. Campground does not accept reservations. It's first come, first serve for one of the two busiest camping weekends of the year. Good thing to know Maybe in Schwartz advance. Be with you. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm staying in a hotel. <laughs> I was going to say, plan them. B. Yeah, have a plan B. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but yeah. I don't know that I'd want to camp for a long distance race anyway. Like, I think that, <laughs> that's just asking for... Yeah, no, a spirit of adventure. You know, I guess yeah, that's such an individual thing, God. man. Ooh, I don't like <laughs> to camp. It's an adventure for, and a yeah. half. Camp God. before the race? No. Camp after? Yeah. yeah. I've done that. You, it's yeah. not like you're going to do anything other than eat, sleep, <clears throat> Just and lay poop there. anyway. Lay there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a baby again. <laughs> Revert back to infant status for a day or so. <laughs> so, you know, talking about traveling, obviously, uh, you know, advice on selecting a race that requires additional travel. We've already talked about. Uh, you know, hotels, lodging, airfare, something to consider if you're shipping your bike. Uh, but then there's a bunch of other logistical things, too, that people need to be considering. Um, not to stress people out, but it'll be a lot more stressful if you don't plan for it. Yeah, really. I, I think that the biggest thing for me is always leave extra time for everything. So getting to the airport with a bike and they say the two hours. Yeah, it, Take the two hours, you know, do not be that guy who's trying to rush his bike through at the gate agent when they've got everybody else's bags through and then argue about the bag fee, you know, 
be the first one up there with that big heavy bag they're likely to be a little bit nicer and you can chill and you know so just little things like that um if you haven't been to an area before you don't know the race location you think oh it's going to take an hour and a half to get there give yourself an extra half hour with that because one wrong turn out in the middle of the wilderness in the dark usually Mm -hmm. you know you could kind of mess up your mind for the whole day so you know if if you i think that's just that extra time that's the big one for me right you're not going to complain about extra time that's going to be the nicest surprise you get all <laughs> yeah. trip if you ha- plan too efficiently and you've got an hour to kill. Mm-hmm. You know, th- there's there's very little consequence for yeah, having extra exactly. time on your hands. No, that's that's very the true. peace of mind is worth tenfold. Yeah. One other thing to consider too, I know, is just m- meals and nutrition. Especially if you're flying, you're not you're not taking the grocery. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, you're not that's packing number a cooler two. In the car, and that's, and that's number two, I'd say, because yeah. You know, and if you're going to a big race in a big, big place, Ironman, you know, if you're going to have dinner, go out for uh, dinner the night before or the dinner the night after. Right. Yeah, or reservations, always. And, you know, have check, do some research on the city ahead of time. You know, if, if you have dietary restrictions or if you diet messes with you, your belly messes with you and you run, be really careful about what you eat. So if you can't pack it and take it with, are there grocery stores you can go to? Are there places you can order ahead of time? Call the restaurants ahead of time. You know, do some of that upfront planning because that I I hate to see that when somebody has trained for months and months and months and planned and put thousands of dollars <laughs> and they go to a race and they end up having to bail because of GI distress. Because they, and, especially if they just winged the and, nutrition. Yeah, and it could have been something they ate, you know, on Friday night uh, for their Sunday morning still is getting at them. They, that is. Oh, yeah. You know, so that that's uh, be careful with that. If, if you got an iron stomach more power to you but if not like most people well even if you have an iron stomach yeah. an iron stomach even in an iron yeah. man yeah you're gonna you're you gonna can't have, just grab something at the taco truck no <laughs> i mean there's just so much planning yeah. that i mean really honestly one thing have either have a plan for food mm-hmm. written i mean know what you're gonna eat yeah, the couple of days leading up to the to the yeah. race i mean yeah. in a big event like that it's, i like to have athletes just write it out yeah what are you gonna eat every day you know and, and it leave yourself a little bit of flexibility but think about it ahead of time that's the last thing you want to be worried about i know for me like i panic when I'm like oh i don't know what i'm gonna have so having a bag of snacks with you it's like even when you walk down to go pick up your packet oh yeah toss a bar in your your pocket that you know that you can eat so just in case you get there and all of a sudden everybody else decides to register and the computers go down and you're there for an extra hour mm-hmm. you know what where can i get a bottle of water and where can i find some food don't don't let that be you. Part of the accommodation equation too. I know I, I'm thinking of some things that uh, I have done before, um, mm-hmm. like seeking out hotels that are more of the extended stay variety that have yeah. the built-in kitchen. Or Ooh, Derek, like you guys did clutch. for Lake Placid, if you can swing it and have enough people to rent a, a larger uh, full-on house. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know I mean that's that's the ultimate and that that made your the stuff trip. Where you I want mean, it. You know, we we yeah. paid dearly for it as far as out of the pocket book, but man, it was worth every it penny. Was worth it. I mean, just factoring that in instead of being shoved into a oh, regular yeah. single hotel room with no cooking facilities. And... Oh yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. having the just having the the people that around you that are going through that with you, and you know, the support from the significant others, everybody there. I mean, it just turns into a huge family, and mm-hmm. you know, you you grow closer with those people anyway, and just you know, create more of those lasting friendships that are just going to you know drive yeah. you. Yes, yeah, so you if you are going to travel, if you can, do it with a group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. Pick, pick races that, that other people are going to go to or, you know, sit down and talk about it with, with your friends that are also mm-hmm. racing when you're starting to pick out your big races for the year and kind of plan those races as a group yeah. so that you've got your own little club going. And... Yeah, well, and I think you can, I think that can help on things around cost, too, you know, yeah. depending on what you do. Yeah, you, know, you pull costs for rooms. Splitting, and... a, a, you know, yeah, rooms or transportation or, you know, and I, I, thinking about cost, don't forget that there's a lot of discounts out there, and I know we kind of get excited and we get in there, and some of us have AAA or whatnot, but USAT and USA Cycling both offer travel discounts. So, like, I just rented a, a minivan through, I got, USAT discount was better than anybody else's. Huh. Hmm. Couldn't believe it. Beat AAA and everything. I was like, wow. Huh. So, yeah, I was kind of blown away but very happy that it's available. So always kind of check those discounts and, you know, ask your coach, your, you know, race companies, ask them if they have travel deals, you know, see what the host hotels or if the host hotel is booked, hey, ask, hey, can I get a discount somewhere else? Or, Mm -hmm. you know, don't, 
the worst they can say is no. <laughs> so. Things like Airbnb too. I mean, there are tons yeah. of other options out there. And a lot of Definitely. times you'll get a better experience out of that than you would just mm-hmm. staying at the hotel anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. And, and uh, we're mentioning traveling in a group. That's one way. Also, you can kind of pick other people's brains if they've done the race before mm-hmm. or if you have that uh, resource somewhere else. There's nothing quite like getting a good, accurate description of what you're getting yourself into, especially when you're traveling for a race. Yeah. Because, you know, unlike your local familiar races where you may just go out and do the course. I mean, a lot of the stuff yeah. that I do around here. You were training either, on the course. I've yeah. trained on the course or I've run the race three or four times before and it's just such a non-issue. But, you know, you get to a different part of the country or the world with different signage and different way things are handled. Uh, a different race company with different markings on mm-hmm. the road. Maybe not as many markings as there should be. <laughs> Maybe no <laughs> not markings. Not naming any names. <laughs> <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> But yeah, no, there's there's definitely ways you can find a lot of information. I mean, these days with social media, a lot of race companies, um, they generally have their own Facebook page or groups. Some of them, especially like Ironman, Rev3, they're doing uh, Facebook groups dedicated to each event, mm-hmm. which makes sense. And there's a lot of great information there. There's a lot of crazy there, too. Um, you know, get in there about six weeks before the race and everyone's losing their minds. Right. But ahead of that, you know, generally, especially in the early stages or before you've even signed up for a race... That's a good place to ask, hey, who's done this before? Who can throw me a race report or your course file or... And let, but let's go, yeah. let's go one step further beyond that before you start, you know, posting a bunch of random questions in mm. your news group is about the same time as that's going to happen, you're going to get an email <laughs> and it's going to say something like race Bible something or official. athlete packet yes. or please read immediately <laughs> important information about your race. Yeah. In that treasure trove that they're going to send you is all of the information that you're probably already going to ask about where to stay, about what the course looks like, whether or not you can use headphones. Yes, all Uh, the maps, the rules. Maps, rules. The schedule. All of those things. It's right there. Elevation profiles. Yes. Water temperatures, <laughs> I now, know. Now, Lana, we know water temperature <laughs> is the day of the race. I know, but man. Race morning. Could somebody run down and check it? don't know if it's going to be wetsuit <laughs> Could legal. Could you check it right now? I know. Can it's... you tell me if my race in October is going to be wetsuit legal? I'm waiting for the race, the uh, <laughs> enterprising race director that uh, does like a live stream of the lake with the temperature. <laughs> like you could stream it to Facebook Live or something. 79.3, 78.7. What's it going to be? So I did this race one time. This was great. It was up in um, in New York. In It was, was my first official open water race. It was uh, the Cayuga Lake Triathlon. Fantastic race you ever do it. It's right in um, Ithaca, basically right outside Ithaca. Gorgeous course. Um, Tuckhannock State Park. You run up to the waterfall. It's this amazing, it's like 200-foot waterfall that oh, you cool. run to and run back from. Gorgeous. Well, the weird thing, it's a Finger Lake in, the, in um, New York, and the way that works is because of the way the wind blows across New York State, it actually causes the water to turn over, like a bathtub almost. So it blows it along the lake so that the warm water on top will actually get pushed down to the end and it will push underneath and push the cold water up to the top at the other end. It's... It, Google it, look it up. <laughs> I don't know what the phenomenon is called, but it actually does this. So the temperature in that lake can turn over by like 10 or 15 degrees within like three or four days. Whoa. Yeah. So that was sort of like, hmm. <laughs> so now at that time, when I first did that race, uh, social media was not in as heavy a use as it is now, but it was one of those things, well, we'll just have a wetsuit. We know the range of temperature is this wide and deep and we'll just see what happens and it actually turned out to be just fine which is generally what happens at every race the water temperature is what it is and you just go swim pretty much but it was a little weird wondering hmm, what's it gonna do i will say you said mention to bring a wetsuit and hope for the best i i have gotten to the point now after last year this is Mm -hmm. the first year that i really had this experience was like i mean i was racing up until like may and june and i had two races both were xterras Mm -hmm that ended up being wetsuit legal yeah. by like a half a degree, but still wetsuit legal. I didn't have my wetsuit. I didn't, I mean, but still it's yeah. like if, if I'd have had the wetsuit with me. If you're driving, put it in the car. Yeah. Put it in the car. There's Period. no reason not to have yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Put and that's like, they gave me, in. you know, I was like, you know what? I, sh- I should like take my old sleeveless wetsuit 
Mm-hmm. And like cut the legs off of it and make like a neoprene speed suit out of it <laughs> for those for those races that it's so bloody hot that I don't want to wear my full yeah, sleeve suit. Go, but yeah. if I could get some extra buoyancy and speed, so say these days, you know, yeah. go just for it. Go for it. <laughs> well, that kind of plays into though replicating the conditions as closely as you can, as yes. far as preparing for this race specific stuff. Sometimes what you may be doing may be similar enough in region and terrain and everything like that that you don't need to do much different. But then you could also be going and racing. In uh, in Maui, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> that uh, suffice to say, is a bit different he than, Maui. Note than the, the time, Appalachian folks. region here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think I think speci- There's a time and a place for specificity, and I think a lot of folks get sort of obsessed with it. It's like I'm going to do this Ironman, and it's going to be really hot and humid. Oh my God, what do I do? It's going to be really hilly, and they kind of get obsessed about hot, humid conditions and hilly. The thermostat's now 79. But here's the thing. You still need this base volume that you can still get no matter what conditions you're in. You know, there's still that endurance and and things that you can do. I mean, 90% of that training doesn't really matter when it comes to how specific it is to the race conditions. It does matter. I'm not saying it doesn't, but the large bulk of your workload, it's not as big a deal. Like, you're going to swim a lot getting ready for an Ironman, right? Yes. Okay. Most of it's going to be in 25-yard chunks. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you know, you're going to have to hit that wall a bunch of times, and you're going to follow a black line a lot. As you get closer to the race, yes, get some open water time, get some good experience. And if that's your weakness, that may be where you focus. But if you're strong on the bike, you know what? Maybe you can just hang out on your trainer and you'll and be all right. And that goes to play. And that plays into to picking your race. If you're yeah. not a strong swimmer, find a good downriver race. Exactly. I mean, there's plenty of them out there. Mm-hmm. Get your river swims in, get comfortable, but you don't have to obsess about making every single swim an open water swim in a river. You know, and I think balance it. And that's, I think sometimes that's a value of having a coach or a training group or at least a training plan that's designed for a race. Good ones will accommodate enough that you get enough specificity that it's going to help you, but not so much that you kind of sabotage your whole training program because you're trying to get it just right. Right. Yeah. And it's the whole taking my trainer and my bicycle down to the local gym and yeah, the, putting uh, it in the room, sauna. The sauna yeah. And here's the thing that comes back to those marginal gains. If, if yeah. you're on the pointy end and you're racing for seconds and dollars, that That's, might actually yeah. make the difference for you. But for the average person listening to our show, probably <laughs> going and hanging out in the sauna and mucking up your bike parts probably isn't worth the time as just going out and getting in a good ride anywhere and yeah speaking of that i I don't know if you guys have seen this and i i I don't know if this has been covered on this podcast i know i've heard some other people talk about Mm -hmm. it but y'all have ever watched leland sanders you know who leland sanders is have have you guys ever seen how this guy trains yeah i mean the guy is just an absolute freak of nature anyway Mm -hmm. but he does like all of his training inside in a closet yeah like all of his bike training Mm -hmm. on a trainer his treadmill in a closet and he sets it to like a hundred degrees mm-hmm. and he does all of his runs on it's Chris. It sounds like your kind of guy. No, I don't do heat. <laughs> I do not do heat. I was more talking about just like the closing yourself in a closet and running for hours but and you hours know what? in and, the and same again, place. It's but effective for him. It's and, super effective. And if you've him. read about, you know, if you read about anybody who's trained in, you know, Brett Sutton's camp, there's definitely those workouts where they're doing that. And they're also uh-huh. doing things that aren't very specific. If you're running up a mountainside in Switzerland, through the snow and ice and then you're going to go race in like Lanzarote. Yeah. Not real specific, but nope. still very effective, helpful training. What I also got, one of the one of the pictures, he posted it on Instagram, back to Leland for just a second. Well, post, the picture I saw on Instagram was him on his treadmill and he had that picture from Kona when mm-hmm. he got passed. Oh, yeah. That right, that instant Dude. where he got passed and it was posted right in front of his face. Amen. I was, man, that's, Take, that's hardcore. That is really I mean, hardcore. that's motivation But you right know there. that for that, for him, he knows what works. That's his button. I mean. That's, that's, that's awesome. If you know what your trigger is, man. Ooh. A lot of us just kind of flounder around going. I'm excited to see what he does this year. Oh. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It, it, yeah. You know, oh. Kona's going to be good this year. Yeah, I'm not training in the closet. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah that, that race in the dark, not, not going to happen. <laughs> nah, not going to not gonna do that. <laughs> Chris, we just need to find you a race that revolves around like running around in a tiny little circle, like in, oh, a, I've, in I've a, cons- a neighborhood. I've considered um, uh, track marathons before. Mm-hmm. And I have also, I can see that. I've had. Uh, yeah. those, those 100 hour race or the 24 hour races. Yeah. Yeah. That's the indoor uh, Ironman. Yeah. yeah that, 
that's i don't know about indoor iron man the vikings (laughs) portion would be kind of long i have done i've done 50 miles on a 0.6 mile loop on the bike before and i've did i've done 100k on a three mile loop so that was a little bit better but that was for speed too so that was helpful to to keep that that's a special thing chris (laughs) (laughs) so that's all you can say so if that's that's your race then Uh you know what then there's definitely ways to train so go to the y and run around the track so i gotta ask you what, Uh what goes through your head when you're doing these things like are you just such a data guy that you're just focused nothing but what's on the garmin you're like just watching the power or do you just are you can you just kind of tune out and lock in yeah no i guess what works for me for that is that i don't have to pay attention to where i'm going and ah. it's a little bit easier, I think, mentally. So you're to trick abdicating myself. those decision, that decision making, right? Yeah, there's external. there's less focus on that. Yeah. Um, it's also a matter of sometimes it'll be a good way to trick myself into going further, mm-hmm. um, because I can just do one more and five more and ten more or whatever and get there that way rather nice. than uh, taking biking as an example. I'm going to go out, you know, 35 miles in a straight line, and then if I get out there and feel pooped then i have to come all the way back and you know or if my tire goes flat or whatever can you tell i'm a glass half empty type of person (laughs) you you are yeah if someone shoots at my bike tire (laughs) mentally noted here dang um but you know and and to be fair i'm a little bit legendary with the with the few things that i do like that i i do point to point stuff and longer stuff too but i do have more tolerance for that and often with with the running side of things it's also just you know getting lost in in a good podcast or good music or something like that too where it's you know i'm not having to consider how far and whatever it's yeah. just a go around and around and mm-hmm. so you do run with music on that yes oh, okay i I, yeah. I i almost always run with music and that is i do like uh running races for that reason just yeah. because it's just easier for me uh, the best case scenario for me in a running race is getting on autopilot mm-hmm. um or even just in a long training yeah. run is just to hit that zone where the miles just are regular and tick off mm-hmm. and I don't have to be thinking and willing sure. myself through it as much. Um, so so huh. there is that. But yeah, patience for boredom and monotony, you know, finding these little tiny loops to ride well, around. Triathlon's your game, man. There Long you course go. especially. <laughs> but, you well, know, I got to we'll say, you know, in, in besides being just specific to kind of like the course itself, I think you got, you think there's some room here. Also, be specific when it comes to the nutrition. Yes. yes. You said, you know, practice, practice using what's on course. If you can at all possible use it give it a try i still say if, if i you ever know, which i don't know if you can eat it or not and then try training with it you know i before don't you... ever intend to do another iron man i'll say it right now it's it's in public i have no desire to do another iron man if i were to do another iron man i would do it on course nutrition it would okay, it just yeah. takes an entire other level of stress out of the day sure sure knowing that everything Absolutely. i need is every few miles on the bike mm-hmm. every few miles on the run I don't have to worry about if I jettison a bottle. I don't have to worry about anything. It just exactly. takes a whole other stress. Yeah, do I get away. to my special needs bag? Did I time it right? Yeah, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. No. All yeah, right, open good. up a new file. Book of Derek here. Uh, March 22nd, and I will not do another Iron Man. This is not right. news, Chris. This well, is I, not a breaking news story. How do they say this there's is a the tweet first for time everything? you've been ever so ex- explicit Twitter. about it. I've got the, well, maybe someday, long in the future, in a galaxy far, this, far that away. That was an unequivocal no. That was, that this was almost a hard no. no. I put this I put this out there, though, and and I this is also public knowledge i've told my wife Mm -hmm. if she ever does one i'll do it with her so i think i'm pretty safe to say so we know what the lever is we know what the lever is we know what the lever is message amanda do an iron man (laughs) why am i doing an 80 mile bike uh, yeah, there no. you go. Just start jacking up those training <laughs> yeah, right. miles no, a little I, bit. I don't know. I thought just you, you, yeah, enjoy just that. Something you might want to do. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, just give it out. See what, see what you think. But yeah, the nutrition aspect is very, especially the longer the race. Certainly, yeah. uh, you know that's something on a sprint, and uh, you know probably even Olympic for most people. Not too much concern. Yeah. But once you get into the halves and fulls, you, half, you know yeah. it's 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 good to know that. Uh, obviously, trying new food and drink on race day is is an iffy thing i I will say for longer stuff like 
uh, you know, so the you, 50K yeah. or whatever that, you know. Sometimes desperation. Sometimes, right, you know, it's like, I <laughs> tried pickles. Commands. <laughs> I tried pickles. I'm like, how would I, why would I eat pickles at 26 miles in or whatever? You know but what, they that were would be amazing. perfect. Yeah, it's like, mm, vinegar, They were amazing salty. at that point. I had pickles at three different aid stations. So sometimes the trying new is your, is your, is your last uh, resort. But yeah. in general, you know, just don't go into it willy nilly, obviously. Well, that's true of most things. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so the food and drink kind of covers itself. The more sensitive yeah. your gut to, I mean, you just you don't want to monkey you with just that. Don't play with that. Gear wise, that's also something to be thinking about. Uh, you know, if if your shoes need to be broken in, don't break them in a week or two mm-hmm. before. Get them kind of ready. Um, yeah, if you get new cables on your bike or a new chain on your bike, don't do that the week before the race. No. If at all possible, you know, month or two out, break it in. Make sure it's adjusted properly. If you can do it, great. If not, take it back to the bike shop. Make sure it's dialed in. But I had to get new stuff. cranks and chain rings once the night before a race. That, however, Ooh. was not planned. It was a last-minute training ride that uh, the pedal just stripped right out of the crank. <laughs> Apparently, it was loose. I had just bought the bike. Huh. A mistake. Yeah. Um, it's not play it off. It's your max power. <laughs> yeah. Output. You, oh, it, no, it's from a dead stop. So I. There you go. He did. He torque. A lot right of torque. Yeah. Right. Torque. Gosh. Yep, Jeez. strip the threads right Massive out of it. Massive power. Right. Like it was impressive. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost bit the dust. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, that, that made... But I wouldn't want to do that by, uh, you know, by design. No, you know? no, There's no. Another... Or by, uh, by <laughs> neglect, you Here's know? Here's another right. thing to, to just kind of throw out there, too, is if you're going to have somebody look at your bike, like, you mm-hmm. know, if you're going to take your bike to the bike shop, do it at least two or three four training rides before. Yeah, well before. And even then, like, I mean, use some sense. If your bike's yeah. riding fine, I mean, if, if it shifts well, if you're not having any random noises, anything like that, don't mess with it. Right. Don't Especially mess with it. Especially before race day. But, don't but take mess care with of it. it. You know, take I mean, care of you it. You know, clean the chain. You know, go out. If you go out on a, a mucky, wet ride, clean your chain. If not, even if it's dusty, keep it clean. You know, just take care of the basic things. Keep your brake treads clean. You know, check your tires for crap. I mean, the little things. The little things you, mm-hmm. you don't need a shop to do for you. And wash that bike. If you're spilling goop all over it and peeing on it, wash that bike. Yes. Wash, wash. that bike. And, and love your bike because you're counting on it mm-hmm. for a big chunk of your day. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter what race you're in. I don't care if it's a 10-mile sprint. You're counting on that bike to get you home and nothing else. So take Let's face it. I mean, if you, if you yeah. break a goggle strap, you can still finish <clears throat> the swim. You know. Yeah. You, you can get through a run. But yeah. if your bike breaks, you're done. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, I have seen folks here, right here in Knoxville. Uh, if Phil Beecher's listening to this show. We've seen him run his bike in. On, I don't remember if he pulled his shoes off or not. It's been a while back. But he ended, ended up running his bike in the last mile or so of Rev 3 Knoxville. Mm-hmm. You know, had a bike issue. Luckily, it was that close. But still, it was not the way he wanted to race. No. <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Get that, Get that into the shop. And if you aren't. Um, comfortable and confident with taking care of your bike, get it in in that one to two months out of your first races or if it's a big A race, you know, have them take a look at it. And, you know, don't be like, oh, here it is, surprise, and I need it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, don't don't put that on your That's not a way to make friends at the bike shop either. No, no, (laughs) no, no. no. Or with the folks that uh, are there volunteering their time, uh, the race morning, the mechanics coming out there or whatever. And and that's, seriously, that's, you want some entertainment, go hang out with the bike mechanics the day before the race. And and, uh, Rev 3 Knoxville saw a lady pull up there, needed an entirely new chain. She needed an entirely new mech. And they were honest with her. It was like, we can change the chain, but honestly, it's just going to skip the whole time because your gears are so worn. Yeah. Like this bike is just worn out. And there she is, day before the race, traveled in, paid a bunch of money, and is on a bike that shouldn't be put back on the road. So, you know, it's one of those things. That, so take care of it. But also, you know, if you got new shoes, unless that's your practice, and some people have that, that thing where... Mm-hmm. They, they have a brand new shiny pair of goggles for race day. I've heard of several athletes doing this, and it's kind of they just unwrap that new pair. Me, personally, I'm like, mm-mm, I can't do that. I would want to know that they're good. And I remember that at Rev 3 when they handed out those orange uh, Blue 70 goggles. Uh-huh. I'd always see people out there race morning sporting those brand new <laughs> goggles, and I'm like, is that the kind you usually wear? You know. 
Like, nah, they I just really look. hope oh, they don't leak today. Good luck, man. So, <laughs> yeah, try that stuff out. Be ready. You know, but don't. Even kit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your race kit, especially in a long race, because you will find chafing in places that you're oh, I didn't know that seam was there. I didn't know the <laughs> zipper was going to stick me right there, you know, so. When yeah. you're that long into a race, too, like, the little things can oh, just yeah. absolutely drive you insane. But even on a short race, imagine doing uh, even your a sprint with a wetsuit that you've never worn before that first race of the season with a wetsuit i'd rather go i'd rather go cold without it if i hadn't been in it yet i wouldn't you know so it's (laughs) so it's it's things yeah so don't try anything new on race day definitely extends to the gear i'm talking about maintaining the equipment but also maintaining the body as you kind of start winding down before a race uh, especially the bigger race so you know talking about taper which is just kind of a subject that just always gets thrown out there. And, and I see it. I can't say that I found the formula that this works because I've done both extremes uh, yeah. as have many people. And that's what I see other people doing too. There are the people that are kind of waiting for a month and a half before or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I've had enough of this. I'm just going to take it easy from here there on out. Go, yeah. And then there are the people like what taper, you know, it's like, Oh, it's, it's Thursday. The race is Saturday. Mm-hmm. I think I'll take it easy today, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, obviously if it's a sprint and it's a C race or whatever, that may fit your plan. But uh, you know, definitely I've seen some people not take yeah. enough. It's, but it is very individual. So there yes. is no one right, right way, but it is something that you should. I, I think it's kind of funny. I, it, when, if you look at sort of the textbook of how to, you know, peak and prepare for that race or taper, um, there's sort of this, it imagines that you have this, this nice, uh, base period and then a build and you have this periodized training plan and then you're going to do this taper where you you cut the volume by 50% and keep the intensity and you slide right into your race and you have this perfect day you're perfectly fresh you're perfectly fit and everything just goes nice and smooth and the reality is is that even the most consistent dedicated athletes the training plan doesn't end up looking like that um there's a lot of life no one races on a schedule where they don't do anything and then they just do this one race that they've been planning for so it's nice to see the textbook definition of that and people out there trying to do it well it's three weeks out it's four weeks out this is what i should be doing Eh, you know i found that it's very individual like you said chris and it seems to be what works well for one person doesn't work for the other some people like to go in a little tired they race best when they're a little fatigued that's Some, me yeah you know and keep the workouts intense keep them hard leading into it um i'm looking at a race that i'll be doing two weeks from now and here's the thing i'm definitely not in a i'm kind of more in a base level right now this is not looking to be an a race at all but still an important race and i look at it i'm thinking how do i want to go into this decided there's not going to be really a taper met with my doctor i know everything's good physically with me i know i can handle some some good volume and intensity over the next couple weeks so i'm probably going to hit the line not feeling fresh as a daisy but actually more like i'm building intensity and kind of like working into a training schedule so those races are end up going to be hard training day but i'm not going to be taking days off and resting in like if i was in august right so you know but know who you are know how you race best think back to your best performances And it's like, what kind of shape was I in before that race? What did I do in those weeks leading up to it? If you've been using training peaks and you've got your thresholds and everything set up and you're using that performance management curve, that's exactly what it's designed to help you with is look and say, my best performance was here. Where was the pink line and where was the yellow line? Where was the blue line? Can I replicate those conditions when I design my training for this next big race? And can I, can I kind of repeat that? Because that's probably your best formula for success is, you know, what you've done well in the past. Yeah, and that comes with just, you know, that comes with more racing, you know, to, to figure out how, how mm-hmm. you do the best. And, yep. you know, for me, it, it's definitely, it's it's a shorter taper. I just, mm-hmm. I, longer tapers, I get, my legs get heavy. I can't, you know, it just doesn't work for me. Right. You know, I'm, I'm good keeping the intensity way up and, you know. And it works well for you for, yeah. for the, your racing schedule. So but, it's like, you don't really have time to taper because Derek would just be tapering the whole time. <laughs> Pretty much <laughs> constant tape. <clears throat> That's all he does, you know. So I think Just you have to race. figure it train. out. Yeah. But I think it's pretty much what yeah. my summer is. Like right. I stop training in like April and then I just race all summer. So, 
No, and I, th- I think that the part that gets tricky too is if you get sick or you have a really obnoxious workload, you know, like your normal day job before races and it's like, oh, I can't get these workouts in. And then you try to fit in even a lighter workouts with getting no sleep or eating poorly or being sick and then you end up just totally flat and dead. Yeah, training is not the only element in that equation. I mean, there's a lot of other things that are important to think about all the time, but Mm -hmm. especially in that lead up, you mentioned sleep, obviously. That's just, uh, you know, going to the start line tired is is, uh, tough. Weeks before, I would rather have people get extra sleep and miss a workout in the week of a race. Every time. Oh, yeah. Every time. If if you're a week before the race, you're... You're trained. You're trained. I mean, yeah. You're as trained as you're going to be. At that point, you're, you know, you're you sharpening can. the arrow. Yeah. You're you know, yeah. sharpening the sword. Whatever mm-hmm. you sort of. In other words, at that point, you cannot make it better, but you can. You can, you can certainly can make it worse. Absolutely make it worse. Yeah, I would so, say so. You know, and if you need that extra to, to maintain your focus mm-hmm. or just to feel good about it, but it's not going to add anything. No. It can really no. only subtract if done poorly yeah uh we mentioned diet obviously mm-hmm. low fiber keep that gi happy uh no big yeah. spicy meal unless yeah, that's your you thing know. unless you're powered by don't methane. do the yeah, thai like, food maybe, <laughs> maybe not the beer tasting you know festival the day before unless that's normally what you do you know yeah. i mean it's yeah there's a lot of i'm thinking the uh thai food indian food kind of situation the night before a race yeah, yeah, probably uh, not the best idea. Yeah, unless that's your normal and you walk yeah. in and say, you know, spice level zero or whatever, you know, but do do your normal thing. But yeah, that, yeah. that's how I think that's one of my um, big challenges is I normally eat a lot of vegetables and fruit. So <clears throat> I normally get a lot, a lot of fiber. So I have to remind myself just don't have a salad that day before. Yeah. It's not really helping. <laughs> it's only going to make it worse. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to sort of shift a little bit there. So periodizing diet. <laughs> For, to match your taper, yes, for sure. As we're counting down a little bit to the day before the race, that's kind of the day I think everything seems to hit the fan and people get really nervous and and are trying to maybe do too much at the last minute. Yeah. This is compounded if you're traveling too. And, and do the best you can for one. I mean, no one's going to do anything perfectly. Well, and trust but to your the, training. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But to the extent you can, some mm-hmm. other points too. You mentioned obviously stay off your feet. Don't don't be going trucking all over the place and doing a big hike and carrying a bunch of stuff around. Or... No, no, no. And it, you know, race expos they yes. can be awesome and they can also be the death of you. <laughs> so oh, yeah. you know, so be be cautious of that you know if you're gonna do go to the expo i always try to get to them early and get out of there especially if they're outdoor in the yeah. summer you know where you're out there just frying in the sun it's not just about i mean even if you're not walking around that long <laughs> i mean the temperature i mean if it's the middle of summer if mm-hmm. you're doing a july iron man if you're Oof, doing yeah. you know an august iron man i mean just being out there in 90 degree mm-hmm. weather walking around for yeah. a couple hours is gonna really increase your fatigue load yeah. needlessly but even if you're doing your local sprint don't push mow the lawn the day before maybe maybe wait till after the race you yeah know? you know don't mow the lawn at all because you're you're a triathlete now yeah. you know, somebody to do that, that. nobody gets time to mow their lawn <laughs> just let it go the hoa will be fine <laughs> <laughs> eventually they'll have somebody mow it for you <laughs> just pay the <laughs> bill it's cool so but yeah no it's uh that day before um i think what you said before chris really m- makes the most sense is that you can't really um enhance anything and make it much better but yeah, you can yeah. certainly do a lot of damage okay. <laughs> totally screw it up and you know one thing that i think too you t- people tend to run into sometimes is um with the issue of sleep the night before a race because a lot of yeah. people are really amped up i would say mm-hmm. from my own experience give yourself the opportunity to sleep you know don't yes. don't neglect that but don't worry about it too much either because there's a very good chance you're not going to sleep well. And honestly, going into it, I mean, so everyone's different. There are mm-hmm. some people that would be absolutely dead, but it, adrenaline kicks in. True. It really, you know, I've I've never had better than maybe five or six hours the night before a race. See, and I've had some fantastic night's sleep, but it only came, you know, if, if you go back into our, our podcast archives and you pull up one of the ones with uh, Kevin Sprouse, where we talk about sleep hygiene. You know, I think if you practice good sleep hygiene habits kind of as your norm, like get into that, you know, getting rid of the blue light and setting a bedtime and setting a cool bedroom, kind of getting that schedule down. If you do that and just kind of follow that right into your race, and then even when you're on location, if you're staying at a hotel or a house or something like that, if you can replicate that 
that routine is going to help you sleep. But one bad night of sleep, if you've been sleeping well, one right? Bad yeah, night that's of, the thing. Yeah, if you yeah. have this huge sleep debt deal. built up, that's going to be more of an issue. But yeah. that one, don't don't sweat it. Don't get mad because no. you can't sleep or whatever. But set that yeah, bedtime. I think that's the one for me. Is if I know I'm going to have an early wake up call, like let's say you got to get up at four o'clock, you know, for the race, whether it's to eat and go back to bed or you know to get up and go practice that week or two before if you normally wake up at six you know make sure that you're getting to bed on time but kind of keep that 6 a.m wake up maybe try a couple 5 a.m wake ups and but make sure you're getting to bed the night before so kind of get yourself onto that schedule a little bit ahead of time so that you're not usually getting up at nine in the morning and then all of a sudden one day you got to get up at four your body like no what you're not going to perform well either one thing that helps me too on on that is like just knowing that I've got duplicate alarms yes. set up. So like I always, I set my phone and I've got two or three on there uh-huh. and I set my watch. Do you want a wake up call? Yes. Yes, I do. And I so that, 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 that'll that take a lot of the stress out of trying to go to bed too. Yes. Cause you know, a lot of it for me is just that paranoia of, I mean, Don't what if I oversleep? Don't want, especially if it's a big race. Like, you know, there's nothing worse than that nightmare of, waking up for your big race or you keep waking up every half hour because you're afraid you're not because you're wake afraid up. you're not yeah, gonna wake exactly. up i've, I've done that the worst. oh that's the worst if yeah but, trust that wake up man oh totes so I, tough so i'm a morning person with a morning job regularly get up can't even sleep in generally even on the weekends and yet i would love for races to start at 2 p.m <laughs> i do not race you need to get well into bike in the racing yeah, I mean, two p. I couldn't do that, but I mean, maybe like not two p. Nine thirty or ten o'clock oh, would be yeah. ideal, because then you can kind of wake up, you yeah. can lounge around, you know, you have your breakfast, breakfast and leave the house at eight or something, yeah. and not at five when it's daylight. Not set up. You in can the set dark. your set your things up when there's sunlight. <laughs> you don't have to perfect. wear a headlamp. It's it's not you know cold. for anything for anything but maybe a now half you've just or a made full. it normal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. that is one of the reasons i like mountain biking so much and mountain bike yeah. racing bike, is... bike racing in general is a more civilized uh time yeah. schedule yeah i mean the one da- drawback for a later start i suppose for your halves and fulls though is it starts to get really hot later well on in the yeah day any and... summer race even doing an olympic in the summer mm-hmm. you know starting By at mid morning starting at 7 a.m versus 9 a.m is huge uh, but also traffic on the roads if you're on an open right. course you're gonna get a lot more cars and even waterways so i think one of the reasons some of the, the races we do have is because it's like oh we only need the road from you know 8 to 10 not from 10 yeah. to 12 on a saturday right. when the dump's open you know <laughs> It's, yeah, that's like towns get all up in a in a fuss. I will say one thing about the day before we didn't touch on was uh, talking about that final prep. Um, my advice, especially for a triathlon, is definitely get out and make sure your bike's working. You know, if you've traveled especially or if you've had any work done on it or anything like that, you've put it on the car and taken it there and taken your wheel off. Check through all the points, make sure everything is tight on it and take it out for a ride. Make sure it's shifting and braking as expected make sure nothing is rotated out of position you know you don't have a loose bolt somewhere and suddenly your headset is you know off to one side that's breaking b-r-a-k-i-n-g not e-a-k-i-n-g because you know as much as you might trust the loving gentle touch of united airlines you know Mm -hmm. with your bike who what's in this box (laughs) yeah you really don't need their help so so definitely take the bike out for a spin make sure it's all what needs to be and and check it over and then go for a little run, you know, blow off some of that steam. You're, at this point, mm-hmm. you're all adrenaline and everybody around you is doing race stuff. So, you know, get but out. But at the same time, don't go out and just ride like all of the course no, just no, no, because, no. Yeah, no. you know, that. No. And Take a page there comes from a point Derek, at which, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, if, if, you're doing, if you're doing races on the road, I mean, you can yeah. definitely, if you're at the race site a day or two ahead of time, go drive the drive course. Drive the course. Drive, drive the, the course. course. Yeah. That way you're, you know you're looking for potholes you're not trying to find you're looking for turns you're looking for cues you know turns. You're, you're judging the grades a little bit you're looking at road condition um yeah, yeah. i mean is, is there is there a bridge seam that's just crazy where it exactly. you know rattles your yeah. teeth when you go over it in your car yeah. you don't want to do that in your bike though no unless you, um yeah. things like that driving the course is good i mean even the run course mm-hmm. i mean you know if you've got some extra time mm-hmm. go drive the run course if now, it's a longer race i will and... say about the swim course sometimes i think yeah go ahead and get the swim practice if it's maybe your renting or borrowing a wetsuit and that's your only time to get in it i would definitely take the time to at least hop in and get four or five hundred yards something in that wetsuit just enough to 
feel it, feel the conditions. If you're really nervous about open water swims or nervous about this race for some reason, then getting in the water might help calm you down. If it's a moving water swim too, like if it's a river swim or something, just getting in to feel the current. If you've got to go any portion of the race upstream, right? you know, feel what that current feels like a little, because I mean, it's going to change race morning anyway, but Mm -hmm. you at least get some idea if you're not used to fighting current. Yeah, get some idea of the sight lines and how dark the water is, what the bottom feels like, things that might sort of shock you in the morning if you're not comfortable and just swimming in a lot of conditions. And I know that I've heard the argument the other way, which is don't swim it at all before the race, especially if you're in a polluted water way. Oh, yeah. You know, so... <laughs> There's that. Yeah, so it, it kind of, it depends. It, it, it Maybe you only brought one kit with you, you know. Maybe you don't have the gear to go both days. You know, whatever it is, but think about that swim. Do I need it or not? Is it going to help me or not? Yeah. Um, it's not always... I don't always say, yes, you must go swim. Yeah. And you can kind of take the time to kind of do that self check too. It's like, if you have those reservations Mm -hmm. about anything in the race, you know, what am I, what am I freaking out about? Yeah. You know, see what you can do to kind of control that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You know, am I freaking out about the bike course? Well, that's maybe when the drive of the course might help you think, Mm -hmm. okay, well maybe that climb that I'm worried about is not that bad. Or maybe that huge screaming descent is not that bad. Yeah. Or if you're worried about, I mean, there've been races we've been to where the day before the race, the water conditions were scary at best. And it was like, uh-huh. God, I really hope it calms down tomorrow. I'm just going to go to bed and hope. Yeah. And I've done that on several races. Now that I think about <laughs> it, where it was like, there was no chance for a pre-race swim. And I didn't want to, if there was. <laughs> so yeah, if, if that makes you nervous, you might not even want to look at the water. <laughs> mm. Judgment call there for sure. Uh, yeah. Also worth mentioning on longer races, um, especially the big branded races, mm-hmm. they can be, if you have raced local small races and then yeah. all of a sudden you're doing a big name brand event with 500 or a thousand or 2000 people, give yourself lots of extra time mm-hmm. for everything. Yes. Yes, for sure. Everything, all the lines are longer. There's always extra steps. I mean, show up at an Ironman race and they're like, Hey, we need to take a picture of your bike before you walk it into transition. You're like the what? <laughs> <laughs> okay and i don't even think that was in the race bible it was just something they did yeah i don't think it was yeah so i mean so you'll run into these sort of things that you just sort of have to do and deal with and you're like oh this isn't going to take long or i have to go get body marked you know what throw a sharpie in your bag yes throw a sharpie in your bag and you know it's you not can... the rule that they have to mark you no and, <laughs> and even these days um usat is relaxed on that body marking quite a bit so there have been a lot of races in the last couple of years where i haven't been marked at all and rock and roll so yeah but everything takes a little more time there's more logistics you know if there's going to be bags oh, <laughs> we God, all know bags. write your bag plan oh, about bags. a month ahead of time the bags the bags get get on top of those bags if it's the first time you're doing a, a race that requires bags and it could be a half or a full generally uh yeah get ahead of that and make a plan for that early and then everything that goes in your bag and everything that you take with you that day Take that Sharpie and write your last name, your phone number, your race number, something in you, every piece of last gear. Last for your social. Yeah, well, seriously, and here's the thing. So one time we worked, um, Iron Man Chattanooga, we worked at the, uh, the bag sorting. So all the bags would come back from the transition areas. And you know how after the race, someone goes and you pick up your bags for you? Yeah. And they're all together. Okay. And they're all organized in rows. So you've got these 2,500 people's three bags each. You've got the morning clothes, you've got T1 and T2 bags, okay? And the numbers, the stickers on the bag never stick. They always fall off. Know that. Um, So, and then we had this pile in the corner of bags where the numbers had fallen off and gear that had fallen out of bags and had all just kind of come back. And it was this lost and found pile. And we actually pulled up, we got, we got creative because we we'd gotten a lull. So we pulled up the race <laughs> list of bib numbers. We'd find like somebody's last name and we'd pull them up and we'd search for them. And we'd find their race number and we'd be able to get it into their bag. But some stuff had no identification at all. So if you took your favorite kit to the race, you know, it might be worth putting something inside, some kind of label, something, because you never know when your bag's going to split or open or whatever and all your stuff goes blah. Yeah. So another way around that, those two-gallon Ziploc bags, you can always put it inside that and then put that in. Yeah, and think about that, too, if it's going to be potential of rain. Yeah. I mean, if if unless you just want to come back to... It's going to rain at your race. I'm well, sorry. Well, yeah. It's going to rain. 
So the Ziploc bag, put your shoes in a Ziploc bag mm-hmm. if you don't want to come in T2 and find your, exactly, yeah. you know, shoes already. Oh, so that harkens back to my half in the yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. So if you race a, enough, this will happen to I you. I had a, yeah. everything in a bucket with the lid and the lid fell off and there was ah. two inches of water in my bucket yeah. when I came back. You had a bucket full of water. I had a bucket yeah. full of water. <laughs> oh, look, my socks soaked up all the water. Great. Oh, they were there yeah. at the bottom. So I ran yeah. barefoot instead and had blisters for two months. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's going to rain. So yeah. like you said, bag that stuff up. Hell, I've thrown extra business cards in my bags. You know, I'm like, at least there's something in there. So, yeah. You know, and they may not be my race number, but they'll they'll find me some yeah, way, Yeah, when you're marking your bags, just, you know, another top tip. Mm-hmm. Use, um, like, duct yeah. tape? Duct tape. Brightly colored duct tape. I, Put... I, I had rainbow duct tape on yeah. my bags for, for Iron Man. Mm-hmm. I was the only one there with rainbow duct tape. Yep. <laughs> I've seen, there was a lot of very creative folks. Yeah. So it was fantastic. like rainbow or tie-dye or something. You, yeah. know, you couldn't right. miss it. Yeah. But yeah, help, help, help out the, the folks working there. Cause that's, uh, that's a, that's a hell of a job. If you, you want to get the insight on how a race works, oh, volunteer in one of those areas, <laughs> but Ew. it was kind of cool. I, there were some people who had some really smart solutions to that. So yeah, just, you never know with 2,500 people's shoes, you don't want to lose yours in that. Next time on the show, um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the individual uh, aspects of actually racing, mm-hmm. seeing that, you know, now we've got all the run up, we've got everyone all excited yes. and eventually you actually have to go and race. It, it's not all about sleeping and training and packing and there's actually, this, no, it really is. It really kind of is. <laughs> well, that's true. Really is. That's true. It but really is. In, in theory, at least with this sport, there is actually a moment where you do the thing. Yeah, there is. And it's and rather... very important. And, and honestly, the results in the race, it's very important. It, yeah. No question. Exactly. No question. It defines but, you as a person. Yeah. All of your worth is tied up in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait will, a second. Go back and listen wait, to that Leslie Patterson will, and Simon We Marshall will judge podcast. you yeah. by the size of your tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll cover that a little bit next time. And we'll also cover about uh, kind of looking at the results after figuring out how to use that. Yeah, yeah. How to best take mm-hmm. notes even during the race. Because, I mean, I, a little, I little find... little chat about race reports. I oh, think, yeah. I think oh, there's, a, there's, some, yes. uh, there's some healthy will... opinions in the room, and uh, we can help Maybe you. Maybe some unhealthy ones. Yep. Who you, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll find talk out. talk about some we? race reports. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your podcast feed for that. That'll be coming up shortly. And if you have any questions specifically about racing, or even anything we covered in the last couple shows here uh, that you want clarification, or you want to pick a bone with us, or you want to say that that was the best advice you ever received, and it changed your life, uh, let's see. Compliments go to Chris at LostTransition.com. Uh, and, uh, Complaints? Hate, hate Complaints. mail can go straight Send my to way. Derek at... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything about the ha- gallery. Derek right. has an email now, so be feel free to uh, to let him know what you think. And the rest of us. <laughs> we're looking forward to that. Uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, you name it, we're out there for listening. LostTransition.com uh, tells you all the places you can listen, or you can just hit play right on the website. And uh, Facebook and Twitter have our social media updates. And uh, let us know what you'd like to hear on some upcoming shows. And we will talk to you again soon. 